Cranky Geek Fall 2022 is brought to you by Google, Spearline, Crisp, and Daily. For more information, see the links in the description. Our next speaker doesn't really need an introduction because uh, he had an, inter an introduction earlier, but for I guess for those who are watching on the, the YouTube replays later, I'd like to introduce uh, our, our co-host, Sai Levant Levy. Hopefully I, I didn't butcher that too badly. Um, you butchered it. I, I have gotten a lot of practice over the years. So, uh, well, Sai, among the many things he does, uh, is actually a, a product lead over at Spearline. So he's going to tell us a little bit more about how they make sense of and do a better job of diagnostics by making sense of web proceed statistics. I'll let you take it from here, Sai. Thanks, Chad. So when you look at web RTC statistics or think about it, usually this is what you're going to think about. You're going to open Chrome Web RTC internals, see a lot of text, and at most you'll see these kinds of graphs. So I guess if you're developing with Web RTC, this kind of a screen is kind of familiar to you. And the main challenge there is exactly what can you find there. So the first things that you can look at and find is the bit rates, the packet losses, the jitter, and a lot of these metrics that are out there. If you look a bit further and, and dig deeper, then you'll have things like bandwidth estimation for the video and quality limitations. There are audio levels for the audio. And then on video, you also have the ability to understand how many send frames that you have and receive versus decoded frames. Now, the thing is that once you take a look at it and understand what's on the peer connection, these are the things that you can answer or the things that get meaning out of the peer connection statistics. Usually you can say things like, well, there's packet loss as a problem, or you know, it can't connect, we just can't connect the setup. We can see that ICE messages didn't flow or whatever, or that the CPU is trashing. And this is great, but not always actionable. If you tell someone, well, there is packet loss, what does that mean exactly? Does it mean that it, it is on his end, on your end? What should he do to improve that packet loss? And there are other things that we want to know when we are trying to troubleshoot. Things like, what is the user's network like? What is the speed that he has? In, has his UDP or TCP traffic been blocked by someone? Is that a machine running in the cloud or in a VDI environment? Okay. And a lot of these questions that we have cannot be gleaned off just looking at the peer connection or the user's call itself. It requires us to do some specific testing over and, and above what you get inside the peer connection in WebRTC. And it goes to what it is that you're trying to achieve, okay? I can decide, for example, that what I'm doing is looking at WebRTC and trying to look at the actual traffic from the user to the RTC backend. That's like passive monitoring. I'm going to look at the statistics and try to figure out what goes on there. I can take a step further or something different, which is a kind of active monitoring. I'm going to replace the user with a kind of a bot that I control and own. And then whatever it does, I can review, which gives me a lot more insights, but not about the user because now I control the user. The third thing that we can do, and that would be profiling. I don't care about the specific call. I care about the call, the user, the environment of the user, his network, his traffic, everything. Not in a call that had an issue, but in order to solve problems from that user, I'm going to run tests to understand how his network is like, okay? And the things that we're going to collect is like everything and everything that the browser can give us. We start with the actual alcohol, which is the basic thing that you can do. So I'm going to get the peer connection, get statistics, and collect that. You can conduct that on the session of the user, or you can conduct that also on the media server that is close by or something similar. There are other things that we can do which are more interesting or more useful in the long run. Things like connecting information around turn connectivity. So I'm going to connect to the turn server, try every time to use a different relay protocol, starting with UDP and then TCP and then TLS and making sure that they can connect with each and every one with them separately. I can run a throughput test over UDP, either through the data channel or a media channel where I'm sending packets quickly 
to see what happens and to calculate the throughput and the bitrate. I can also just do a bandwidth speed test over HTTPS. The same as you would the speed, speed testing test that you have on the internet with the main difference of doing that in front of file server that is located near the media servers because that's the type of connection that, that we're trying to actually gouge and monitor. I can also check the location of the user to try and understand his IP address and from that try to glean information like the ISP that he is using, the country or the city that he is located in. I can also try to figure out if he's over VPN, Tor, or a hosted network, just based on that information. Then there's DNS configuration. There are things that I can look for to understand what kind of DNS the user has configured. If I know that, I can validate the type of routes that he is taking, and that may cause problems. We'll see that in a second. And then there's usual device information, the operating system, the browsers, things that you should probably collect if you're not collecting it already. So what we did at SRTC was build such a thing. Um, and this is how it works. We call it Quality RTC. It's a dashboard of the call, of a call that we had. Um, and the only question is, well, you have so many numbers and colors, and we understand that red is bad, green is good. But how exactly do we read that to understand what the issue is? So let's go over this one to figure that out. And I'll tell you up front, there's a VPN issue here. And we'll start by simply looking at the location. We use reverse IP lookup. We take the IP address. And guess what? It's a known VPN address. So we know that. But there are a lot of other hints that we can use that here if the IP address isn't known as a VPN address. For example, if you go and check and compare, you'll see that the location of the user is in France, but the machine that he got connected to is in Tokyo. So something routed him to the wrong location. And that's probably AWS Route 53 did, because that's what this specific service uses. Um, and we need to figure out why. It can be a VPN. It can be something else. If you look at the round trip times for the actual uh, voice call that we've done, the round trip time is like off the charts. 400 milliseconds it not, is not something usable, and it's not what we're looking for. So something is wrong here. And then the throughput is quite low. We can't get enough bitrate out of this connection. Although we've got on the uplink 11 megabits per second, it's like it's puny when it comes to the UTP traffic. So something is probably throttling it. OK? Here's another example, which is different. Here, what you see is a corporate network. And the first thing that pop pops up is the fact that we can't connect over TCP. We tried connecting over UDP. It succeeded. We tried connecting over TLS. It didn't. And then over TCP. OK. And it just didn't work on TCP. It worked on the rest. And this indicates that something, or probably something, in the network is blocking that. So there is a firewall rule in there that is causing these issues. OK? Another thing that we can see here, and that's an easy one, is that the organization is not an ISP. It's not a telco. It's a company and a large one. And there is no city, which means that someone is using a VPN of a company, the corporate network, or is inside the corporate network it itself. And then definitely someone is providing firewall rules that you need to figure out. OK, now the deal breaker for me would be the round trip time. It's high, OK? And because it's high, it means that the firewall rules block TCP, but they do something on UTP to throttle it in a way that it's just not usable. Another thing that we can see here is that the jitter for bandwidth speed, speed testing is high. is high. That might be either due to the same problem of someone is configuring and shaping the network, or it can be because the user is on Wi-Fi and far away from the actual access point. So we have multiple angles here to try and check to figure out what the issue is. And most of it is not available on the peer connection itself. OK. We can also see that the throughput is like a bit unstable. The minimum is too low versus the average and the maximum. So there are things that we can do to improve the network. And it's on the client side. It's not on the server side. Now, 
this is nice figuring out what the VPN is. I want to show you, share two more uh, things that we can figure out to catch tricky routing issues. And the first one is what we do with geolocation. Um, usually when we run a test, we also check the DNS settings of the user. We have our own servers to figure that out. And at the end of the test, in the logs, you'll see things like what AS ASN is the user using. Uh, and this is someone that is using Google. So he's going to Google DNS servers 8.8.8.8. OK. And that might fudge the routing that AWS Route 53, for example, does. We've got users that use Cloudflare as their DNS. And when they do that, AWS might send them to the wrong continent with their traffic using Route 53. OK. So catching these things and understanding that they are because someone place the DNS on his machine is really, really useful to uh, help your customers with the issues that they have. Now, the best thing that I've seen was this. Uh, it came about by a customer that we've done a webinar with, and that's the first time I heard about that one. So you have a call, and that call is in a call center. So one leg of the call happens in WebRTC. The other one is on a SIP trunk or, or on PSTN. The agent of WebRTC is located, let's say, in South Africa. OK, the customers are in Europe and they are making these calls. Now, the thing is that if you try to figure out the locations of the media servers, you'll find out that the closest route is going to be to Brazil, for example, for a media server. So the agent is going to be connected to Brazil. And from there, it's going to connect via PSTN to Europe. So you're taking the longest route possible instead of going direct. So you might want to force such links to go direct, but you need to first understand that this is happening. Now, if you try to go direct to a media server in Europe, you must might still fail. So you need to take that into consideration. And the failures there might be ones of higher, uh, higher packet losses. So then you need to balance between latency and packet losses. OK, so these are like the kinds of things that you should be looking at and the type of data that you should be able to collect in order to figure these things out. So here's the things that we've learned from this. Um, and the first thing I think the important one is that troubleshooting is quite different than debugging. If I want to debug my application, I can look at the peer connection, figure out things there. I, I like make the users static or predictable, and then I focus on implementing and debugging my server. With troubleshooting, I have customers complaining about issues, and then I need to try like a detective to figure out what their problem is. And for that, I need as much information as possible, and then the pre-connection alone is just not enough. The other thing was that you need a lower friction with the end user. You can't install anything on his machine. You don't want to go back and forth with him because that's going to frustrate him as well. So you want that to be as simple and smooth as possible. And that's not easy, but it's important to achieve. Then you need to collect as much as you can because you never know when you'll need that. In many cases, what we've seen is that you know I get these URLs from customers of saying, here's the problem, what does it mean? And then I go read that and try to explain to them what might the issue be. And there are very different types of challenges that we face trying to figure out these things. And that leads me to the last thing. Finding the root cause is really, really elusive. It's not easy to achieve. And you need to look at multiple test results and combine them and merge them in order to understand what's, what's the root cause for that. And this is something that we've trying, we're trying now to do and to add a rule engine that would solve that problem to make the lives of users trying to troubleshoot these issues a lot easier. Thank you to our sponsors, Spearline. Guarantee a better customer experience by testing, monitoring, and benchmarking your voice and video communications.